In the last video, I showed you how to improve our basic neural network. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can import a data set from Excel. To start with, you've got to create a data set. Um, I've just created a simple XOR system right here, uh, just divided into the tables of IN1, IN2, and OUT, which is fairly self-explanatory. It's just the IN1, which is 0, 1, 1, and 0. IN2 is 1, 0, 1, and 0. And OUT is determined by whether one of these is a one. So if both of them are one, it's a zero. If one of them is a one, it's a one. And if none of them are a one, it's a zero. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, you can recreate that if you want. I might leave a link in the description for it. So once you've created that, uh, you want to go into Spider and we're going to import it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go into this little gear icon and press Set Console Working Directory. The reason to do that is because if the uh, Excel file you just created, the Excel file, is in the same folder as the script you made, then that means it'll be able to read it. So just make sure you do put that file into the same folder as this script. So the next thing you want to do is import something. So it's called uh, pandas and it is just used for data sets. So import pandas as pd. Uh, that's what we're going to be using to import the data set. So once you've done that, you want to do data equals pandas dot, oh no, not pandas, uh, pd dot uh, read csv, and then you want to give it the file name, which in our case is just xor.csv or whatever you called it. And again, if it's in the wrong folder, then it won't read it, so just put it in the folder with the script. The next part is to divide it into the input and output data. So to do that, you want to go into a new line and type x equals data dot iloc and I believe this is the format and dot values and all you want to do is just divide it like this. And for those who've used Python before, you probably know how slices work, but I'll explain it again real quick. Just doing these with two colons uh, represents everything, but making it so that say you have a one at the start in the second axis or the y axis, or just the second dimension really, um, what you want to do by doing that is make it so that it excludes, or it includes everything after the first value. So it doesn't include the zeroth value, it includes everything at and after the first value. And then if I want to uh, make it so that maybe it goes from the first until the second last, or probably from the second uh, would be the most logical way to explain it, to the second last. And that just makes it so that it cuts off both on the ends. What we want to do is make it so that x equals everything except the last one, which is, as you can see, what we want because the first two are what we want in the x-axis because we don't want the output data in it, we only want the input data. Okay, so we have x and to do y is fairly straightforward. Uh, you just want to do minus one rather than colon minus one because you just want the second last one rather than everything up to the second last one. And also one last thing, um, you just want to remove those brackets. You didn't need to put them in. Okay, so now that you have that there, you can remove your old X and Y, and you can test it. Press F5 to run it. And you can see how right here, it's working and it's gradually getting lower, but it's not going at a fast rate at all. So that's because we don't have the best optimizers and loss functions for this, which is something we will do in a second. Okay, so you probably want to raise the dropout value a bit, just so it doesn't overtrain because there's not too much variation here, but it's always good to have a bit of dropout. Um, next thing you want to do is actually, um, you want to create, uh, we're going to change the loss and optimizer functions. So for the loss, what we're going to use is something called binary cross entropy. So this is just a loss function for a binary value, which is 0 or 1, which is what we have. So that makes logical sense. And for the optimizer, we're going to be using something called a stochastic gradient descent, which I mentioned in the last video. 
and to use that we're just going to do import or from keras dot optimizers import sgd so optimizer equals sgd and we're just going to use a learning rate of one um, so it just it's fast and it won't overshoot because everything's between one and zero anyway so to test that now you just want to run it you can see right here it's gone really low already so I might as well just use like 100 um, okay so it's gotten totally wrong in this situation um, <laughs> I'll have another go and see if that was just a... Okay, don't know why it did that in that situation. Um, okay, that's a bit weird. But yeah, that's that's why you have your um, learning rate a bit low most of the time. So I'll just try like 0 0.75. What probably was happening was it had a big error at the start with the randomizations and then it just wanted to overshoot because a big error with a big learning rate means it's going to do a big adjustment probably too big for it to like come back from realistically so it was just overshooting so let's try this now run it a few times and see if it succeeds um it sort of does but that's what you can expect from 100 uh so if i raise that to like a thousand maybe okay yeah you can see it's gotten 0 0.9999 and like 0 0.001 so it's working pretty well um and yeah that works so the last thing you might want to do real quick um is if i just cut all of this out temporarily uh just to show you how all of this is working if i just do print data then print x and then print y and run that you can see right here this is the data uh, it's the exact same as it was in excel so just in one in two and out and then the next line is x which is everything except the last column so it's given us that uh, you can see how it's a two-dimensional array because it's got two dimensions to it um, and yet the last line is the y value which is the last column and you also notice how it doesn't have the in one in two and out on these um, I'm not certain but I'd say that's just because of the values uh, tag at the end so if we get rid of that again well you might want to keep it in there it doesn't really matter um, but yeah that's a working uh, table from uh, working table from Excel. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.